Well, hello. It's just me doing some writing. Oops, let's turn this off. And I figure that if I make myself one hour a week, at least, where I do some things and get them done, then they'll get done and it'll be amazing. And I'll actually do things that I want to do. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just going to put that to the side. Um, don't know that anybody will show up, but at least I'm doing stuff. On this map tonight. <sighs> this map. I've set myself some goals to get things done, and one of the things is fixing the map that aren't in current. So this is this country that I've been working on. Um, it southern shore. It's in the southern hemisphere of this world. Um, so this is the temperate zone. Um, bottom half, these are all very high cliffs, very high mountains, but this is kind of the breadbasket area. Um, I have the major rivers here already mapped out in some of the major cities. Um, yeah, this is Himalaya in the world of Idemaharaya, which I've been working on for 20 years now. Writing stuff in, working and doing things. Um, it's just trying. Um, yeah, so I don't have a lot more to go on this map, but I have enough that I need to work on. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, f I'm going to, unfortunately, I'd like to be using my tablet, but today I am going to be using um, my mouse because I've just switched to a new computer and I don't have everything yet that I need to work on this, and that means I am using this tiny little travel mouse. <laughs> right now um, and tell the mouse that I um, have been uh geez oops let's give it that um and well until the new mouse arrives because it didn't arrive with the computer unfortunately and I could use the touchpad, but I hate touchpads so much. They put them in the worst place. Like, I know this is a giant one, like that big, on this computer, which is great for laying my hands on and deleting things that I'm not supposed to. And so I turn it off. It's, I don't like using touchpads unless I have to, unless it's like a quick thing and stuff. So, but that's okay. I can use a mouse for this. It's not as easy as using my tablet, but that's okay. At least we got it here. I just got this new computer. It's an XPS 17 uh, because I have been using Surfaces for a long time um, and I really love them, but it's just coming to a point where I needed more power again. So I've switched back to the XPS. Uh, take a drink here. Sorry, the dogs are both in my chair. I need to find a giant chair. There should be room for all of us, but there's not. I like to lay behind my back and on my side and it makes it very difficult. And I find myself walking, perching and pushing back and stuff. So if I Look like I'm sitting weird. That's why I have a 30 pound pug. He's currently right here, and a 10 pound cheeky dog who is currently in the back of me, <laughs> pressing on me at all times. And 
that's where they like to be. Um, okay, so where am I? This is Himalaya. Himalaya is, um, I'm doing all the world. I'm also setting up my world anvil. I've been doing it offline for years, but I finally decided to go with the world anvil account. I like the setup. Um, so let me just log into that really quick. I have written three novels in this world. Uh, one actually made like finalists in a bunch of contests and had a bunch of read throughs, but honestly it was horrible and I don't know why anybody didn't tell me because <laughs> I had people look at it. Oh. And so I ended up scrapping that. The second one, which I really like, which probably won't ever sell. Um, and the third one, which has kind of become the meat in the story in the last few years. So. But, and then I'm working on a fourth one. Who knows if we'll oversell any of these. I haven't had any luck so far, but this is kind of the world I'm writing in, so here I'm at. Uh, let's see. So, I have... Oh, let me just open that here. So, this is my world anvil for my whole world building and everything like that. Um, I do have this site, which I put together because I was getting so frustrated. Like, what is with, there is no good world building software that you can just keep on your computer. I found wikis, like I really wanted to use just a wiki wiki and they were so ugly and I had to spend so much time making them look good. This is world animal, I don't have to do that. I still have that ability, but I had built this all by hand. Um, Itself. So I'm going to be referring to some of this from time to time. Uh, let's see here. I need. Oh, it's already in writing. Um, I recently just cleaned everything out and I'll be rearranging stuff too on some of these as I kind of go through everything that I have. I have a lot of pieces to kind of go through. Let's see here. Um, I was keeping some things in Boost Note. Fun fact, you Boost Note can delete all your notes when you upgrade it. I wanted, I had an older version that didn't export and I wanted to export them out and I realized I couldn't and silly me, I should have copied them out by hand before even thinking about anything else, but I saw online that maybe, uh, hey, I can, uh, I don't know, you know, export everything if I upgrade to the new version. So I did. It deleted everything. Completely gone. I went through all the forums, looking at all the things, it just deleted them. So that was busy, but I'd rather, like, this site is all marked down. Um, so pretty easy to do and to use. Um, I uh, like keeping stuff in the markdown files, so at least as far as this goes. So that's I found out about Obsidian, so I've been setting up um, Obsidian and where I'm at. Um, I've done a lot of world building so far, so mostly I'm consolidating everything. It's kind of where I am at the moment. Um, let's see here. I want to get back to some of the old stuff. So this is like all the things I've written. Short stories, I've written all kinds of things, and I'm getting them out of the old software getting them in places where they need to be. Some of it's because it's an old software, not because it's trash, but um, like I used to use Scrivener. I really dislike Scrivener. I'm a Windows person, so the Scrivener is just, I, I gave it, I gave it a chance, but honestly, even their dev team just turns me off. Like they're pretty, they can be pretty nasty if you ask questions and you're on Windows. And I really, there's other tools out there. In fact, I've used other tools. I'm pretty happy with my current other tools, but I have a lot of stuff to get out of things and to do. Um, 
So let me make sure I have everything up here. Sorry, my that that noise is the pug. <laughs> that noise is the bug. Let's see. I've done all kinds of maps over the years. So, like, there's one that I did in, I think it was called Hex Offworker. And this is a very early version of this. Um, where I actually change things around quite a bit now. Kinda. We're gonna keep that one open and let's see what else we got here. I think these are like some of the details. Details in the Hexaflicker program. Um, ooh, I did Talathi in here. I'll have to remember that. But I thought I had I mean, lots of other maps that I've done over the years. I think this one's Camping Cartographer. Because um, I had a really old version of that. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's a different map. I don't know. There's tons I've done. Things that I've changed. As this world has kind of like evolved quite a bit. That's okay. I'm going to come back here to the map I'm working on, and we're going to go also to here. I think. There's a lot of different mapping programs out there now. This is the one that I like. Um, so this is the first one that I did here. I actually started this in the beta, I think, of this. So it's been around for a while and I've added to it over the years, but this is more like the world is now. I decided to redo the map because there's been a lot of new things that you couldn't do before in there, um, which I liked. So I decided to do that and that's why I'm updating it. Uh, let's see here. But, yeah. So I got a few maps up. Let me just break this off. So you can see the shape of the land has changed quite a bit. Um, way World Animal works. Um, you know, I did go through and like try to trace this at one point in the new system, but then I just started adding other things and thought that some of this would make sense. Um, Himalaya is a young country um, in comparison to the rest of the world. Um, they, they've been around roughly 400 years. Um, I think, let's take a look here. So yeah, 495 Bruma, 81 Bruma, 495, and that's by Himalaya Reckoning. Uh, I base everything off Himalaya Reckoning because um, that's kind of where I started, and that's where the first story started. So I know what all the timeline is based off of that. They have uh, two suns, three moons. Um, the suns are distant enough with this to be mostly an Earth-like atmosphere. Um, the moons and the tides um, 
and what they control on the earth. I, I feel like this is a little bit bigger than earth. Um, so in my head, it all evens out. Is it set as in I figured out all the math and everything? No. Nope. Nope. Magic works. We're going with that. But this is kind of where we started. So, all right. So where am I? I've moved things up. Sidre is the capital. Um, so Lorn is, it's not a magic school. It's more of a magic guild, but it's a very preeminent magic guild. Um, magic users for the most part in this world are called dreamers. They manipulate the dream. Um, the way this society is, um, it's kind of a magipunk kind of society. They are not medieval. But not everything is, oh gosh, you know, you're supposed to be able to articulate all these things. I suck. I totally suck. Uh, I wish there was a way, like, how do you guys, I don't know, maybe I'll need to look this up. Not that anybody is checking or chatting or doing anything of the sort, so, but I'll just keep it there. Anyway, so I'm going to connect my old map to my new map, and here I am. Um, uh, but I've kind of squashed out the land a bit. As you can kind of see there. But anyway, Citra's there. Let's see. I have the Fong. I have a fairly large lake there, so I should probably dig that out. Let's go here. And the way that this kind of works to get rivers and stuff is that you dig out the um, land area that you dug in. Oh, I'm adding. I need to subtract. Let's get in there. So, let's see. Got it on subtract. Let's go down to one. I want to make it a bit bigger here. There's this tributary and in lakes. There we go. I uh, saw so the old version of Incarnate didn't do the uh, water lines, and I like the water lines a bit. Um, so it's kind of where we're at. Um, the elevation, it dips out of the mountains here um, into the desert and the plains. Um, so yeah, that's where we be with that. Oh, let's see. So, hmm. I realize I actually put this too close. This should be here. Um, we'll go ahead and give it a title. Make sure I'm using the right font, which is Metamorphosis, which I'm really using just because it's the same one here. <laughs> They added a bunch of new fonts here. So what kind of society is Hamalia? Um, it was founded by people. So there was essentially a religious war. And it was founded by people 
who weren't looking for religious freedom, but basically were running away what they felt were persecution, along with people who were just running away from the fighting. So there was kind of two factions. Um, in the end, both the factions um, kind have uh, have kind of long since have been long since forgotten. Um, they're about to enter the fifth century. Um, is that right? Zero, one, two, three. Okay, they're about to enter the 6th century. They're, in, they're at the end of the 5th century. So, oh, my dog stinks. Pug. So, they're getting to that point, and um, this looks a little bit better. So, we are headwaters. And I screwed that up. Uh, but over the years, as things, you know, kind of happened, the, uh, the religious kind of died down. Um, you know, if magic is real, magic comes from this concept of the dream, which permeates everything. Um, while Himalaya itself is a bit lower technology, um, where they may, you know, farmers may still have carts and things like that, um, but, but slider cars, these kind of hover car things are reality. But what really enables this or really kind of changes how their technology is developed is two things. So technology is powered off of uh, this crystal type of power uh, that are mined in various places, as well as other magical elements like finstone, which acts kind of like a memory if they any markings that are scratched on it, for example, are saved into it and by a person um, thinking of those things while able to retrieve them. Uh, kind of a memory stone. But they call it thin stone because they can uh, make it very thin and it won't shatter um, with normal use. <laughs> you slam it down and it'll still break. But normal use it won't. It, it's fairly, it's sturdy enough. Um, so that's so the way that their manufacturing has gone has been all towards mining because different minerals they can use to power airships, they can use to power um, hover vehicles, they can use to power planes, lights, trains, things of that nature um, in this world. The, oh gosh. Um, so, and on top of that, they don't really need to spend time on communication because the dream allows most people to send and receive dream messages. And if they are considered non-dreamers or people who might be able to hear people communicating over the dream, but otherwise may not be able to manipulate or send messages themselves, that's a very basic level. Um, if there has been kind of this lower caste set up where a dreamer is anyone who can uh, feel or hear the dream or do more. So it's the dreamer is a very low bar, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, this is Maclay. Um, I think I have a mining stamp to put here. Is that right? Mine. Well, let's, uh, here we go. 
for in mind that'll work. Oh, that this is huge. This comes from the regional map section, so we're gonna do a few things here. Get much smaller. Um, so Amalia has a couple mines. Um, they have one big trading port, um, but unfortunately, the rulers have been theocrats. So they have this idea that the broken goddess is coming back. That's kind of the religious thing. The society as a whole is really unreligious. There's definitely religious pockets, but they're unreligious. But the theocracy has, for the most part, um, is it this way? Actually, we're going to rotate it. It's the other way. Um, The theocracy does have hold and has been very uninterested in developing the country. So development has really had to be on an industrial level. Um, do, this has to be below the water of mountains. Do, I always want a dragon. It, there we go. And I have to remember to use the key shortcuts because I am not a key shortcut person. Uh oh. This is what the undo button's for. Okay. I always forget. I wish they had a separate panning, but panning is actually in, under Zoom, which is not normal for a lot of things. Um. Let's see, some of these, I need to like read through some of my stuff to still get, we have Sidre, Gibri, still. Tamak, Tanabe, there's one, um, here. I think, right? It's not big. Yeah, cause, let's see, where's that old map? Map. I had Budai here, and I've moved Budai all the way over here. And this is not. A, this is in a whole different area now. Um, but in this one, I had the longer area. Um, and what's kind of developed is that the towns keep, treat themselves while well, they're part of Himalaya and the answer to the king um, they've kind of become little city-states um, so in that Sidre is obviously the capital, Thalorn and Bastille, those are the three main ones, um, then we have Tyrell um, this one I need to look up when I need it. <laughs> I just know it's there. Um, Tamape and Tamag. And while this is a seaport, this area has just not been uh, really populated. Um, there are quite a bit of storms that came that come in, um, which 
Um, Tamak is actually, which I should put those in, is actually protected by some hills. Um, pug, I know. I know my pug, where are my hills? There they are. Size these down just a little bit. Just type it in, Michelle. Let's see here. Let's make one. Okay. So Tamak is, and then the bay here, which I have looked to see what the bay is. Did I name the bay in this one? I didn't. Okay. Um, well, Bessel is protected by the bay. Bessel is probably the largest city in Himalaya. Um, it's actually built up as a large tiered city um, that sweeps up from the bay where the land facing side actually is just a giant wall um, that they built up all the way to. Um, they're the most powerful being the only port, the only real port. Um, as far as anything else, both ships and um, airships come to Bastille, airships will come to Thorn. Um, Tamaki really, well, it's protected, it's much smaller, um, it's, it's not a good idea to dock out here, so <laughs> I think that's just kind of what it is. So, um, I'm just making sure I have all the pieces here. So, yeah, let's uh, get these named. This is the Pride Inn. And I did try to do like the map with the same style here with some of the newer effects, and I didn't like it much, and I really decided to go with this kind of parchment style. Um, which was kind of fun. And so I'd done the whole world map in that style. And then now with Incarnate, you can drill down and grab sections to make regional maps and keep going in that way, which is kind of cool. So where in this version, um, you just had to like drill down and, and go and it got kind of blurry and weird. But these are the green hills. Oh, event. This is my ribbon again. Okay. Let's get Hills, Prodding Desert. Let's get the rest of these names before I forget. This is a brick. This is the guy. So, um, the way names work in this world, in, in Hawaii specifically, you they all take the name of where they're from. So, Maj Britt, who is um, one of my main characters, she um, she takes the name Thalorn because she is from Thalorn. Cadric, one of my other main characters, his last name is Bastille because he comes from Bastille. Um, in other areas, there's not really a surname in use in the same way. Um, in 
and for residia, um, they tend to say of a certain place. Um, for uh, Talathe, it's such a small country. Um, they don't, they might say what royal house they are in, which is also tied to a city or what noble house. Um, Sorry, Residia. Sorry, I'm talking about Bentaris. Bentaris is going to say of somebody. Residia is actually probably the place that has actually surnames uh, when I think about it. But I have those named. Okay, I need to pull out some of the planes. So this is kind of the breadbasket area um, here. I'm actually going to put a few in there. There is only one really developed route and Thorn is built at the, at the summit of it. Um, Thorn is accessible uh, by ground um, and by airship. Though it does get pretty cold there in the winter being that high up in elevation and that far south. So I think, let's see. Water. Waterfalls, that's new. We used to have shrines. It's fun to see what's in some of these. Oh, it looks like that that's just not there anymore. I might have just dug that out. We can dig out, dig out a new one. Oh. And you can upload your own in this, which is kind of cool. So we're just going to get our digging tool. We have it on subtract. We're going to change it to this weird edgy shape. And... our brush tool and want a darker or a brighter blue color so size down oops made a mistake there we want to do background let me color that a bit more blue and these two just so that you know that they're water and the land and they contrast a little bit more And what we'll same thing here. And what it no. Cool. It's actually gonna come right in there like that. Hey. Okay, so let's make sure everything's saved. You can see I have 65 changes. I should save this. So that's a good place to kind of figure that out. Let's take a look at the whole thing. Comparison to this. Let's take out some water here. Shape. I could go in and add more if I didn't, but we'll go ahead and color it with the same blue. And this way.
get some trees down here. Lot of stamps. Oh, little moving. These are too big. Let's see where do I have this? What do we got in here? Deciduous trees. Oh, iconic cube bridge. Two birthdays. Call the group. This group, I can go to it and then. Thing I do now will be put into it. Just gonna be all around here. Oops. Oh shit! I'm not hitting the button. Hit the button. You're not helping. I don't know if you could see him. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Let's see? Yeah, nothing's happened. Alright. Uh, let's add a few more trees in here. Okay. And then we're going to go back. So then trees, control down arrow. So above those green hills. So. That's selected. If I come here to this tool. We are going to take the opacity down. Oh, is it not going to do it in there? Oh, I have to do it in the thing, that's why. Dork. So, I come down to Southern Trees. And go back into Edit. Now I have this come up, and now I can take the opacity down a bit to match the maps. Aesthetic. Change like their coloring and stuff too. So I'm going to take out some saturation. Brighten them up a bit. Contrast down a bit. There we go. And now they kind of match everything with the map. Cool. So let's see where we're at now. So I need to be careful to exit out of this group, otherwise other stuff will put in there will go in that group. I've gotten all my main bodies of water. Let's 
stampy trees. Them smaller, not that small. Smaller than that. There we go. And oh, you guys, are you leaving? We made decisions with your life. You take that really. Okay. Cheeky is a very squishy little doll. Yeah, you want to say hi to everybody? I mean, this is this is Quibbles. Yes, I know, I know. He's just my baby. He's the sweetest dog. Good tip. He will give you tongue if you are not careful. So you gotta be careful. But he is a very sweet boy. And he needs lots of loves. Yes, you do. He needs lots of loves. Okay. Alright. So I did that. I want to put some trees here. Just a little tree there. Uh, let's see here. A few more trees here. She's kind of cool. So that's Amalia. Hmm. So if you, I don't know, can you leave a comment on these? Really? Comment. But what I should name some of these other land areas. This is the Tamara Sea. Um, on this side, oops. So I'm going to go ahead and close this because. Got everything from it, so we're just gonna close that one and we'll make this bigger so we can see. Ooh. Um, this side here, um, again, not a lot has gone into development, there's not a lot of trade in the side across the sea here, which is fairly wide, wider than the Tamara. Um, this section borders Residia and but. Even this side of Residia is not very populous either. Um, this sea also tends to be a lot more dangerous. Um, is the world fully explored? No. Um, let me show you some of the words. Let me save my changes. Go ahead and get this saved. Ooh, what's new? March stream calendar. Oh yeah, they do stream. It's much better than mine. But, there you go. Um, anyway, I'm going to export this. Export this image. Save image. Darn it. I'm afraid to. Maybe one day I'll feel brave enough to do that. I move things right away because otherwise I'd forget. So this is actually going to come right here and overwrite this one. Place the file. We're going to go to my maps here and you can kind of see. So this is the world map. Um, all of Idmaharia. So we have, here's the Tamara Sea, all of Himalaya here, the Forest Wall and Acropolis, uh, Vasaria, this is the Isle of Frost, this is the Fire Ring, just in juxtaposition to each other. I didn't intend originally when I created these places and wrote stories there. Um, but is the world fully explored? No. So this is where I've written stuff. I could sit here and fill it out and I have ideas of what is in all these areas. Um, but where all the named areas where I've actually been writing stories in. Um, the fire ring is home to the eye hole. 
They are um, a fishing village. It's very superstitious. Very, they have very set religion and very set way of doing things. Uh, but they're also very secluded. Not only is there some very dense jungle on this little island, this very large island actually, um, but their village is actually located right in this bay, which is actually a very shallow bay. They could, it basically comes up to their thighs up until they come out here and the waters are kept very warm by the, um, by the, uh, volcanoes. They, um, actually have like a whole water purification system so that they can survive. Plus, uh, there's water in the jungle. Um, but, and there's no fish or anything edible that grows. Uh, or that lives in the water here. And so their fishermen actually have to leave for a very long time and come out into the whole ocean to bring fish back. Um, but they're very interesting people. And, um, two of my heroes are from this area. Uh, Residia is probably the most industrialized, um, not only do they accept all kinds of dream, which is really the only country to do so. Um, but they, uh, have learned to exploit it in many, many different ways, making them a very powerful empire. Uh, Ventaris is an empire in decline. At one point they were on par with Residia, but Residia has since passed them by. Uh, whereas Ventaris is really struggling to keep a hold on. They used to hold Oh, they used to hold um, a much larger swath of land here, but now this is all Residia. Um, right now, Ventaris is here, um, and and these islands to the south, and the islands here in the Rubia Gulf. Um, the <coughs> cough is really bad today. Mm. The um, there is a small buffer country. It was a buffer region that was created between the two empires, which be out of the small kingdom, which has been held a long time. They've since been consumed into Bentaurus, um, kind of straining relations here. Uh, the island of Surreal is also part of Residia, so it's kind of mass. Uh, I... What's going on here is a lot of different things. <laughs> this There is actually a thriving civilization in here who are cut off, but not in the same way that, like, say, this is. They're not primitive at all. Um, they just can't move freely in and out of the forest. Um, this is called the forest wall by the Himalayans because there's just this wall of forest. And the one who goes in does not come back. Um, and then Vasaria. Vasaria used to border Himalaya in my old versions, but when I changed things up, I actually moved Vasaria north. Uh, it's a very autocratic place, but it's what it is. So, yeah. And the Isle of Frost is another interesting place, also not secluded. This place does actually trade um, with Residia. Residia being closest, they do not, while they, it is colder down here, they don't have ice caps. Um, in the same way, if there it is land. So, yeah, this is kind of the world I've dreamed up and what I've been working on. And I'll keep working on more. I have a lot of world building to do next. I'll hope to see you next week. So what am I doing on this stream? I am writing, writing. It has to be something that I'm creating something. Um, and it has to be digital. So whether it's writing or whatever. So I hope 
that somebody joins me at some point. But here I am.